Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth from the Salem Community Library, and today I'm going to be going over and talking about how to get started with OverDrive and Libby. So OverDrive and Libby are the ways that you can read, check out, and browse ebooks and audiobooks through the community library. And through OverDrive and Libby, you can um, read them on a phone, a tablet, an e-reader, like a Kindle, or a computer. Um, so you might have heard of some of these things I'm talking about before. They can be kind of confusing because there's different names. Um, they're used together separately. Um, but basically, even though they all have separate names, these Wisconsin Digital Library, Overdrive, and Libby all have the same collection and you have the same account on all of these things. Um, so your checkouts are the same, the holds are the same, and your library card that you use is the same. So going over each of these, the Wisconsin Digital Library first is the name of the library. So it's um, who creates the collection of ebooks and audiobooks. It's the Wisconsin Digital Library. Um, members of the Wisconsin Public Library Consortium, like um, us at the Community Library, have access to the digital library. Um, with your library card to the Community Library, you are able to check out ebooks and audiobooks. Then OverDrive and Libby are how you access that library. Um, so there is an OverDrive website and an app, and then there's also a newer app called Libby. And I'll be talking about each of these things a little bit later on. Um, so don't worry too much about distinguishing these three and all the different names. Um, like I mentioned, they all do the same thing. It's just how you prefer to interact with the library and how you prefer to check out things. So you can try each one out and see which one you like best. So no matter which one you use, you will always use your library card to log in. Um, so when you first sign in, you just need your library card, which is um, the number is right under the barcode on the back and your PIN. So if you can't remember your PIN, we usually first um, recommend to try the last four digits of your phone number. Um, if that doesn't work, you can always get in touch with us if you can't remember it um, and we can check it and give it to you or we can change it to something that you will remember easier. And then also, you'll have to select your library first um, when you sign in. So um, although we are the community library, I usually recommend choosing the Kenosha County Library System, um, only for two reasons. One is because it's usually listed at the top. So the community library is in this list, but it's like all the way at the bottom. It's hard to find. As you can see here, this is the top of the list. So it's um, six or seven lines down. You pick the Kenosha County Library System, and then you're um, all set to go. And because we at the community library are part of the Kenosha County Library System, it works just the same, logging in that way. So once you're all logged in, there's um, a few different things you can do. So you are able to um, check out and browse audiobooks, ebooks, and also videos. Um, so how it works mostly is that um, the Kenosha County Library System shares copies of ebooks throughout all of the libraries. Um, so some of the popular titles um, will have long holds lists on them. So instead of checking them out, you're able to place a hold on them. Um, so then once you have something checked out, you're able to read it or listen to it on your Kindle, your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, whichever you're using. Um, there are some limits on your account. So generally the limits are 10 holds at a time and 10 checkouts at a time or 10 loans is what they call it. Um, so you can only have 10 at a time um, per account. And then you're also able to renew items um, only three days before they're ready to expire. And only if they have no holds on them, no one's waiting for them. I'm going to kind of go over the three that I talked about earlier. So the first um, for OverDrive that I'll talk about. So this is how you're going to look at the library and browse the library. So um, the first is the OverDrive website and the website is listed right here. So you'll just type this into like Google Chrome, like Internet Explorer or Firefox, and then it'll take you to this. This is kind of like part of the main page. So this is what you'll see. So the website 
is um, good for people who um, like to listen or read on a computer. You can also stream video. Like I said, we have videos available. And you can also deliver audiobooks to an e-reader and e-books. Um, you can use a screen reader. And then there's also different features that are available on the website which aren't available on the other um, apps that I'm going to talk about, like the wish list. Um, you can rate titles. And you can also see your reading history. Um, so kind of just as a personal example, how I use the website, I like to browse on the website because I think it's easier to see what's new, what different collections there are. Um, and then I like to use the apps on my phone to either like listen to audiobooks um, or um, read books. So like I said, it's about figuring what works for you. So now we'll talk about the OverDrive app. So the, they call it the classic OverDrive app. It was released in 2011. And um, a lot of people still use it today um, and prefer it as their way to check out and read audiobooks and ebooks. So um, it's actually recommended if you have an older device, because Libby is newer, it sometimes won't be available on devices that are older. And then also um, it's recommended if you have a Fire tablet, just because Libby is not available on Fire tablets. Um, so if you mainly use a Fire tablet, you might want to try using the OverDrive app and see if you like that. You can also send Kindle books to your Kindle so you don't have to use the app if you don't want to. Um, and you'll see, as I mentioned, they really encourage Libby and you'll see a lot of marketing around it. But you can try, if you're not liking Libby, you can try the OverDrive app and see if that is more intuitive for you and if it makes more sense for you. So now we'll talk about Libby. Like I said, it's a newer app, um, how you can interact with the digital library. Um, it's great for first time users and streamlined. Um, and like I said, eBooks can be sent to your Kindle. Um, so once you download the app, it'll kind of guide you through the process of logging in with your library card. And as I mentioned before, it's not available on the Fire tablets. Um, it's only available on the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store. So those are the three main ways that you can interact with the library. So the website, the OverDrive app, or Libby. So now I'm going to talk about um, how to navigate and use them. So it's, it's kind of confusing, so I tried to make it as understandable as possible here. So I'm going to focus more on tasks and then show you how to do them on both the website and on Libby. So I don't really focus on the OverDrive app, but the advice for the website is pretty similar. Um, and if you have any issues with the app, the OverDrive app, you can feel free to get in touch with me or the library and we'll try to work through it, um, any issues you're having. So first, we're going to talk about how to find something to check out. So that's kind of the first step is you want to see what's available. Um, so to the right here in the video, I'm just showing that when you sign in, you can just scroll down on the home screen and there's different lists. Um, so things that were just added, um, always available, staff picks. So that's a great way to browse and see new items. You just go scroll down and it'll have a bunch of recommendations. And then on the website, um, on the top bar here, you'll see there's like this navigation bar here. So you can browse by subjects. Um, collections are really great. I have kind of here, um, once you click on the down arrow, it'll show you all the collections that are available. So I use a lot of the times the just added collection because that'll show what's really new um, that's just been added to the library. But they also have um, like genres, so like Wisconsin Reads, Always Available, Series Starters. So they're a great way to find something new. You can also browse by books that are available to send to your Kindle only or books that are available now. Um, so the thing with OverDrive is that um, there's only there's a limited amount of digital copies of the book. So like I mentioned, for popular books, sometimes you'll be waiting a long time. And if that's not something you don't want to wait, you can just click on available now and it'll show you items you can check out right away. Um, so here, there's also um, age specific collections. So there's kids and teens. And if you click on these, it'll take you to a separate version of the OverDrive website 
that only shows you um, content that is geared toward that age group. So with teens, you'll just see teen books and teen audiobooks, and you can always go back to the main collection if wanted. There's also um, searching, so you can do the quick search here, um, and as you're typing, it does kind of auto-complete, um, so just like Google, um, it'll pop up with suggested titles, or there is an advanced search you can do if you have more information. Now on Libby, it's pretty similar, so um, when you're on the app, you can just scroll down the home screen just like we did on the website, and you'll be able to see collections, staff picks, what's new, um, and it's a great way to like just browse and see what's available. You can also search for specific titles, and you can also customize your preferences to better suit your needs. Um, so when you select any of these preferences, um, they're applied to all lists and you'll only see um, items that reflect those preferences. Um, and I have a, just a QR code here. Um, it's a video on how to search for available titles, um, which might be something you're interested in. So now that we've found something we wanna check out, um, we'll go over how to borrow it or check out. So on the OverDrive website, you can either click on the borrow button here, or you can click on the title or cover to see more information. And then once you click borrow, it'll pop up with this window. And then you can confirm the borrow and you can also choose how many days you want to borrow it for. So it'll be 7, 14, or 21. Um, so once you confirm, you'll see all the different ways of how to read it. So you, for books that are available with Kindle, you can click Read Now with Kindle and it'll actually take you to Amazon where you'll either log in or if you're already logged in, it'll take you to that books page and you just click Send to my Kindle and that'll be sent to your Kindle. And you can also read it in the browser, so just on the website, or you can download the ebook to um, put it on a different device. So for Libby, it's pretty similar. So once you see something you want to borrow, um, you'll click borrow. So in the video here, I'm just kind of browsing around and looking for something. Um, so as you can see, some of these have um, placeholder, but most of these you can just borrow. So I tap borrow tap borrow again, and then it'll give me an option of if I want to keep browsing or open the book or go to my shelf, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So it's pretty simple. Okay, so now that we have the stuff checked out on our account, we're gonna look at how to find those items again and how to manage them. So return them early, renew them, the normal kind of library stuff that you would do. So on the OverDrive website, you'll see that there is um, a My Account option up on the top right of the website, and you can click it and it'll give you this drop-down menu, or you can click the book icon here, which will take you right to your loans page. So on your loans page, you will see all of the items you have checked out listed. So from here, you can choose how to read it. Um, like if you're reading it in a browser, you'll have to click that multiple times. You're also able to return or renew. Um, so you can return items early or they'll return themselves when they're due. Um, and then like I said, renewal, you can only renew three days before it's due and only if there's no holds. So for holds here, I'll show you, this is just an example of what it'll look like. So from the holds page, you will um, be able to suspend your hold if you're not gonna get to it. You can remove it and you'll also see your place in line. So for here, it says I'm number eight on one copy, and then it estimates the amount of time it'll take for you. There's also some a feature here which um, doesn't show on the website right away, but it'll show once you have a hold that's ready to check out. That's called hold redelivery. So once it's available, OverDrive will notify you, and if you want to, you can choose to delay the delivery. Um, so it'll say, oh, do you want to check this item out? You can either say yes or no, deliver it later and then you can choose how many days out you would like to have the hold delivered. Um, so this is great. I use it a lot, I'll be honest. Um, so you can choose to save your spot in line as well. Um, so if you have a bunch of holds that are available at the same time, you know you're not gonna be able to have time to listen to them all or read them all, you can um, 
say check out one, but say deliver this next one 30 days from now if you wanted to. So then on Libby, the way it works here is um, you there's a, that bar on the bottom here, which you can see it says library shelf, and in the middle is the book that I'm currently reading. So the library is how you'll see all of the books that are available. Like I mentioned before, when you're browsing, you're in the library. But um, the other option is shelf, and shelf is how you will see everything you've checked out, put on hold, or tagged. Um, so here, let me play the video. So here I'm just kind of showing what it looks like. So you see it has reading now, and this is my loans, and I'm able to um, perform actions on all of the loans. Or you can tab manage loan to return it early or renew it. You can see your progress. And then when we go to holds, you'll see, um, here, let me just pause this here. So you'll see how many days out it is or how many weeks out you'll have to wait. You can manage the hold, you can play a sample. And here I actually did the hold redelivery. So you can see like this normal hold says when it was placed. And this one says deliver after the 10th of August because I said I don't want it until then. Um, so here I think I show you can also see when you tap the calendar, it'll show you about the time that you have to wait. So um, how many people are waiting per total, per copy, and it does change, um, but that's generally how long you'll have to wait. Like if someone returns something early, you will get the book sooner than that. Um, so like I said, you tap between shelf and library to get between the library and the items you have checked out. So on both of um, the website and Libby, there is different ways that you can customize your experience. So it'll, customizing it's mostly to better serve your reading habits and your interests. So the first, um, how you're gonna get to this is you go to the My Account and then click on Settings. And these will all be on the same page. So the first is Lending Periods. So these are just the default. So um, currently I have like the max default, but if you know you're gonna read a book in a week or you usually read books pretty quickly, you can change the default to like seven days or 14 days, and then it'll auto return itself after that amount. Um, so this way you could return things manually, but if you change the default, it clears up your shelf faster if that's something you're interested in. You can also choose to save your checkout history. So this is great if you're trying to keep track of what you're reading. Um, and you can also, like it says, remove the individual titles if you don't want them in your history anymore. There's also display options um, to make the website easier to use. So there's high contrast or the dyslexic font option. And then there's also content preferences. So if you have a teen or a kid who's using the OverDrive account, you can customize it so that you'll only see kid titles or young adult titles. Or if you don't want to see mature titles, you can all change that. Um, and then there's also the option to um, only show Kindle op book options um, if you mainly use Kindle to read your books. So for Libby, there's also a few ways you can customize. Um, so the cool thing about Libby is that it'll automatically display the language that your phone is set in. So um, if your language, if the language on your phone is set to Spanish, Libby will also display in Spanish. And this is, it has nine different languages. Um, so that's one way that you can customize. You can also manage your notifications. So um, in the top of Libby, you'll see this icon. If you tap on it, you can click manage notifications and then it gives you all these options here and there's more that I'm not even showing. Um, so you can choose, uh, so for example, when a loan is expiring, so when it's gonna return itself, I chose to get a notification. So I can either put it on hold again or try to renew it. But you can also just ignore it. You can have a menu badge, which is in here, or you can have a notification on your phone. Um, that, there's also the feature of tagging items in Libby. So this is a great way to organize them into categories and save them for later. So Libby will give you some defaults. I think these top three or four are the defaults. So if you liked a book, didn't like it, you want it on your wish list, you can tag them and save them. But you can also add your own, like I had YA, diverse, and all those different kinds of um, categories. 
so you can really make it your own. So I covered quite a lot in this introduction, and unfortunately there was even more that I didn't have time to cover. Um, so different features and different issues that might come up while you're using them. So when you are using them, things might come up that you might need help with. Um, so you can always use the help provided by the apps and the websites. So here I just have the Overdrive app has a help section, and this was just the Libby. So you just tap the little icon up top, and then scroll down to get some help, and it'll give you a bunch of different topics. And there's also um, websites for Libby and Overdrive, and these are especially great for they, they have step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to use the apps or websites on different devices. So it's a great way to go if you are uncertain. You can also um, feel free to call or come into the library for help. So even if we don't know how to do something, we'll always work to figure it out. So I know it can be really overwhelming and intimidating to try and um, navigate these different apps and websites. So don't be hesitant to ask for help. And I have our temporary hours and the phone numbers for each location listed here. Like I said, I know there's a lot of information covered, but I really hope it was helpful and conveyed in a way that makes you confident to try it on your own. Because um, I really enjoy using Libby and Overdrive, so I, I always want everyone to have a good experience with it. So like I said, if you're having issues, you can always feel free to contact me. I have my email listed there, also the website. Um, well, and I guess that's it. So thank you for watching and have a good day.